Well, hello there. This is Vitual to Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Today, I'm going to show you a tool that I think a lot of people aren't aware of, but it's really useful at analysing your games, and it's even free. That is openingtree.com. Now, when you type in openingtree.com, this is what you see. And basically, you can load up your games from chess.com and lead chess and, and, you know, look at how you perform over a variety of different openings. Now, on chess.com, if you do the opening explorer, you can do something a little bit similar. But for some reason, chess.com just doesn't load up all my games um, compared to opening tree. And with opening tree, you can also filter the games in a little bit uh, of a more nuanced way than what's available on chess.com. So let's have a look. So I'm just going to select standard rules, but you know, you can also choose different types of uh, chess games as well. Source, so chess.com here. I'm going to put myself, Vitualis, continue. Filter, so you can select, you know, either your games in white or black. Some advanced filters, you know, rated, casual games, different time controls, date. Uh, also, you know, my opponent's ratings. Uh, now, I'm just going to select white and leave everything else to the default. Analyze games. There we go, almost done. And as you can see, it loads up just over a thousand games. And the interesting thing is on chess.com, I only get about 960. I don't know why there's a discrepancy, but clearly opening tree using, you know, chess.com's own APIs is able to load up more games. Now, this is myself with the white pieces. And here you can see, you know, in a very intuitive way what you play. Now, I'm a dedicated E4 player. Uh, so, you know, I've got three games of knight f3 first, but almost entirely e4. And I do reasonably well with white, you know, winning, um, ooh, what's that, 58% of the time. So pretty good. So e4, and here you can see, you know, the various waves with, you know, the, the depths of the arrow showing basically, you know, the, the frequency that they occur, how my opponent with the black pieces um, a respond. So most commonly, of course, is e5, and you can see I do pretty well against e4, e5. That's one of the reasons why I like playing e4, e5 with the white pieces, now winning 60% of games. That's pretty good. Uh, let's have a look within that line, so e4, e5, and here you can see you know, I used to play a lot of Italians, did okay, 60% win. Now, of course, playing a lot of Viennas. Uh, and with the Vienna, again, over 60%, almost 62% win. So that's pretty good. So Vienna, and then you can see the most common response is the Folk beer. And with that, uh, if I uh, end up, uh, so I almost always play the Vienna Gambit, and you can see 63% win, really good. And if they accept the Vienna Gambit, look at that, I win over 70% of the time. So, so the Vienna for me is a really, really effective opening. Now let's go back, uh, here we go. What if the uh, opponent responds with something else? So here we go, responds with C, uh, C5. So that is the uh, that is the Sicilian, and here I generally do kind of okay. Like recently, I've been trying to learn the Smith Morris Gambit. Um, you can see I'm winning under only uh, less than half the time, so still learning. It's a complicated opening, but I really enjoy it. So even though I don't necessarily do that well overall, I like continuing to play it because I enjoy the line. Now, previously I tended to play the closed Sicilian knight c3. Did okay, no, more than 50% win rate, about 54%. That sort of uh, allows me to move towards a Grand Prix attack. One of the things was that I just didn't enjoy playing that line quite as much, especially as I moved up the ratings. People tended to do better, end up just being more a closed Sicilian. Uh, and I just didn't really like those positional lines, even though it did reasonably well for me. All right, let's move back. Let's say, so D5. D5, of course, is the Scandinavian. And against the Scandinavian, doing okay. You know, winning 55% of the time. So let's move down to the usual line. And what happens when I play the, uh, the Leonhardt Gambit? You can see that's Leonhardt Gambit, B4. And you can see, 60% win uh, for me on those lines. So really, really happy with that. All right, what's next? You know, here we go. This is you know, where we start to see where I don't do quite so well. So E6, French defense, you can see 
I win less than half the time. So only winning 46% uh, percent of the time, uh, black tends to win, and I know this is a relative weakness of mine, that I'm not so good with the French. I'm also not so good with the hypermodern type defenses. So here we go, you know, d6, sort of pits, modern. I'm not so good with those openings. Again, area of weakness, an area where I probably need to invest in a little bit of time to get better. Uh, let's have a look at c6, of course, that's the Karakhan. Against the Karakhan, I do reasonably well, almost 60%, 59% win rate. Uh, and if we go down the line, I really like playing, um, so captures, and then the bishop to c4. Bishop c4 is the von Hennig Gambit. Look at that, over 70% win. That's why I love playing it. It's not you know, technically that good according to Stockfish, but no, for me, it works really, really well. All right, let's go now have a look at how I do with the black pieces. So change to black, continue, analyze games. There we go. And you can see I'll end up having roughly about a thousand games as well. Uh, here we are, and I'm going to flip the board. So black is facing me. There we are, removes. So against e4, uh, I usually play e5. And I'm an e5 player with the black pieces because as you can see, I overall do okay. Definitely not as good with white, but still winning over half the time. So let's have a look at uh, e4, e5, and what if the opponent plays an Italian? So here we go against an Italian. Uh, whoops, let's go back to one. So against the Italian, there we go. I, you know, winning 48% of the time, so almost 50-50. Italian is very, very solid for white. It's, you know, it's a little bit hard to play against. So, you know, uh, being, you know, with the black pieces, you need to know how to play against Italians because it is a very strong opening. So that's the Italian. What about against the, oops, there we go. What about against the Rui Lopez? You can see I do quite well against the Rui Lopez. 51% win. So let's have a look down that line. And particularly with the way I play now, which is with uh, F5, which is the Yanish Gambit. You can see I do generally pretty well. Again, about 52% win. I win more than I lose. Fair number of draws as well but it's a very, very fun line to play. Uh, now, what about the Scotch? So Scotch game, of course, is quite strong for white, but it's not the easiest game to play for white. As you can see, I do really well against the Scotch. Over 60% win, 62% win, and a lot of that has to do with, uh, now, here we go, they take, and now, look at this. Look at this, queen h4, that's the, the Steinitz variation of the scotch. I have literally never lost a game uh, using that variation. So 19 games, 18 wins, one draw. I really, really love playing that line. And I do way better with the Steinitz uh, variation than any other variation against the, the Scotch. You can see, you know, numbers don't lie here. It is 18 wins, one draw uh, against people trying to play the Scotch against me. Really need to think about playing the Steinitz uh, variation. All right, so there we go. And of, uh, of this sort of opening, the things I don't do so well against, uh, as you can see here, look at this white win ratio here. Um, I'm winning only less than a third of the time. Things like the Ponziani, uh, openings. Ponziani is not that good, but it's pretty tricky. Uh, so I've tended to to lose uh, to lose those games. And you know, there's a few other sort of sort of slightly oddball ones here. Numbers are too small, really, to make much of a judgment. The one that I really aren't doing so well against is the Ponziani. Uh, so one of the things I need to do and go back is to really learn some ways to play against uh, the Ponziani. I don't see it very commonly, but when I do face against it, I don't do very well. All right, so that was um, when the, op uh, the opponent led with e4. What about when they lead with d4? And against uh, d4, I've uh, previously tended to play d5, you know, 
pretty much 50-50, well exactly 50-50, recently I've been playing the England Gambit. And as you can see, still mostly 50-50, um, but you know, I much more enjoy playing England Gambit than D4, D, uh, D5. So let's have a look at the England, and here let's say they accept, uh, I go, uh, so let's say they accept the Gambit, uh, if they accept the Gambit, you can see I'm very, very winning here. So uh, winning over 60% uh, over of time, getting up close to two thirds of the time. So I do really, really well when the opponent accepts the England Gambit, which is the majority of the time. Some of the things I really need to look at is learning better how to play the England Gambit when white declines the gambit. Uh, and the thing with white declining the gambit is that black technically has a evaluation advantage. So either equal or an evaluation advantage. So I really should be doing better against England gambit decline. So very useful uh, bit of information. Okay, here we go, D4. Um, Let's have the next look. So, you know, the rest of the sort of openings get a little bit less common. So let's have a look at C4. So I think that's the uh, English opening. There we go, C4. Uh, you know, I tend to do okay, but we're starting to look at small numbers here now. So um, it's probably uncommon enough that white doesn't know the position well at my rating level. I really don't know any theory either. And you know, it's slightly offbeat opening, not so easy to play for white, and so I just do reasonably well based on just opening principles, I think. There we go. Look, have a look at opening tree, you know, examine some of your own games, uh, and we'll take them there. Look, have you used opening tree before? If you have, leave a comment uh, in, uh, in this video and let me know what you found and uh, how you personally use this tool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.